Hello and welcome to the Calmcast, a time to feel calm and think clearly. I'm Claire Downham, the Queen of Calm, a transformational life coach. I was a burnt out head teacher who finally made the journey to calm after years of trying and I want to prevent you from having to do the same. The Calm Cast is a series of short explorations, gently guiding you back to your natural state, which is calm and clarity. Just listen like you would listen to music, with an open mind and curiosity. There's nothing else to do. Now let's relax into today's episode. So today I'm talking about paradigms. I'm going to start by defining that word actually because it is a funny word isn't it? Perhaps not everybody knows what it is but a paradigm is a model of how something works basically or a concept of how something works Uh, and we have paradigms that, that we live within day in and day out that you will come across in your everyday life. So gravity is my favorite example because it's something that that works all the time, um, whether you like it or not, really. In, in your very early life, when you were very small, you had no idea that it worked all the time. And, and so as a result, that's why small children spend a lot of time throwing things and dropping them, because they don't know that that's what's going to happen. But as we get older, we understand gravity. And so that means that I know when I pick my mug up, that I've got to carefully put it down on, on the unit in front of me so that it doesn't end up smashing to the ground. So that's a paradigm. It's a kind of set of rules, really. And because we understand gravity, we can do all sorts of interesting things like fly. Um, We couldn't fly if we didn't understand gravity and the other forces that come into play when when we're trying to get a massive hunk of metal, (laughs) tube of metal off the ground. Now, human psychology has been on quite quite a journey, hasn't it? I mean, when you think about when when we started looking at human beings and how they work and how they feel and how they think, it, it goes way, way back, you know, Romans, probably before that, Egyptians, you know, there's always been this consideration of why why humans, how they experience life, how, how it, the life, the experience of life comes to us. And there have been a lot of models and theories around that. For, for, for many, many years. And if you have studied psychology or you've got an interest even in a bit of amateur psychology, you can see that there's lots lots of different models out there. Traditionally, you know, how I see psychology and, you know, love to know how you see it, but it is pretty much the study of why people feel the way they feel and how to make them feel better, pretty much. So... Amongst all these, so there's lots of different models and theories of psychology. There's lots of different models and theories about where our feelings come from. And I suspect, um, well, I know that most of us have been brought up with a a mostly outside-in understanding of how life works. So from being very small, we learn that the outside world has the capacity to make us feel things. So that might start with a parent who angrily says to us, um, you know, you're making me feel angry with the behaviour that you're you're doing by not tidying your bedroom or not doing as you're told in some other way. Um, so that's just one little example. But you can imagine the, the myriad of different examples that are available um, in terms of how many times we are. And we have that understanding that the world works outside and we have it reinforced in us over and over and over again and that that then slips into you know the other kind of outside in idea that that you know if you're once you kind of think oh maybe it's not 100% the outside well you might start to think well it's me there's something wrong with me and now I'm experiencing there's something broken in me um, but again that's still that's still the outside in still the idea that there's something damaged in you that's creating your feelings. Not quite, um, perhaps not not a helpful paradigm to live within, that is it, because then it seems like we have to fix ourselves, which, you know, my, my um, encouragement is that we don't need to fix ourselves. So 
When people come into this conversation, they are often, first of all, absolutely blown away or confused or um, rebel a little bit against it because this conversation says, what I share says, the world works inside out. And that is, you know, the idea that you are not a camera going around taking in the world from outside you and, and you know, and just experiencing it, me almost, <laughs> but that you are more like a projector, that you are creating your experience. And that's not just about how you feel. It's not just saying that when you feel something, you're that's your thinking, because it is, it's not just saying that though, it's saying that when you see something in the world, there is something at play inside you that means you will see, you will never see something that is completely and utterly subjective. Sorry, objective. <laughs> Let's get those two mixed up. So, so, you know, your conditioned mind cannot create an objective reality. We see what we believe to be true. And my fun example of that is always that if I believe my other half is really rubbish at emptying the bins, the bins will pretty much always look full to me <laughs> or ready to be emptied or not that they've not been emptied because I will have deleted everything else that doesn't fit my belief of about my, my fiancé. So when people start to look in this direction, there's some areas of life where it's really, they can quickly see that it, though it can't be that thing that's making me feel this way. So that will happen perhaps when we come across something where we, we definitely see other people reacting in a different way. So great example of this is a film. You go to watch a film and you, you know, generally I'm crying most things at <laughs> some point, <laughs> um, you know, but other people are having a different experience of the same film uh, because there's something inside us generating that experience doesn't come from the outside. So gradually, I think, as people start to look in this direction, that the, there's an improvement in how you feel because you start to see, oh, no, that, that's not great in my experience. But everybody's got something. I've still got some things that I, I, I know it works inside out. I just can't see it always in the moment. I just can't always see it. So I have a trickier experience of those things because I can't quite see that, that it's how it's working. And, and I can see those things, sticky, sticky things around me. And it's usually about other people's behavior, generally speaking. Perhaps other people can relate to that. So, as I've said before, you can you can you can live you can live in a real misunderstanding if you think that the world can work more than one way. So it's a bit like, oh, you know, I mostly believe in gravity, but when I throw stones in the air, I don't think gravity is going to work, and that will result in you having a sharp pain on the top of your head because you won't you'll you'll go oh, gravity doesn't work when you throw stones in the air works for everything else, but just not stones in the air. So I'm going to keep throwing stones in the air that end up with the stone landing on your head. Your experience is created 100% of the time through thought in the moment. That is how, that is how you are taking in the world. That is how you're projecting. That is how you're feeling what you're feeling. And, and, and almost it's easier to just go, it's out, well, it's outside in. If, at least if it's outside in 100% of the time, you kind of know you've got to do some things in the world to feel okay. But if you kind of between the two paradigms, if it's inside out for some things and outside in for other things, there is this confusion, I think. And I feel that confusion myself sometimes. And that's okay, because it's all part of the journey. But once you start to see that it's 100% inside out, what happens is when you experience something with that premise, you get curious and inquisitive and 
you sort of ask more of the question, well, what am I not seeing quite here? What am I, what have I not, what have I missed? What am I not seeing around this experience? And by looking in that direction, there can be just a gentle falling away. Of course, having a lovely conversation with somebody like me can be helpful too. Having a conversation with anybody who's seen what I'm sharing here can be so beneficial to help you see past those things that are feeling a little bit sticky. So, yeah, just always when we're coming from this paradigm, 100% of the time, it always works. There can be curiosity. And that is, that's what's so helpful is is just getting curious, just trying to be open to what we can see. Thank you so much for listening. There's nothing to do now, but bring some awareness to how this is working out in your life. Listen regularly to experience longer and longer periods of calm. This has been the Calm Cast with Claire Downham, Queen of Calm. Take care and keep listening.